with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. It's like, because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Hi, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy, and I just want to thank you all for inviting us into your home, whether you're listening by radio, podcast, or on um, one of the networks that we're on. I just want to say thank you for having us and trusting us um, with the gospel because, you know, the gospel is so important. And we take a lot of times on The Christian View, we take today's hot and challenging topics and weigh it against the Word of God because God does have a view, and I believe that His view needs to be shared more and more today than ever. Um, But today, instead of having a panel, I have the amazing opportunity to interview Chris Maxwell. So thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity to be with you. Absolutely. And I want to share a little bit about um, Chris with you. Um, You served for 19 years as the lead pastor in Orlando, Florida. And that was after five years of youth pastoring, right? Um, And now you're in your 16th year as campus pastor and director of spiritual life at Emmanuel College. Yeah. That's Love amazing. It. That's it was amazing. a wonderful opportunity to spend time with the college students and just kind of guide them through their spiritual journey, be there to listen to them and right. have conversations, spend a high percentage of my time just one-on-one pastoral care and, mm-hmm. and being there, uh, letting them know they are important. Right. Uh, and teach spiritual formation. We'll talk more about that later, but uh, just guiding them through what, what does it mean to know God, mm-hmm. uh, not just in theory, uh, but in experience. Right. And you... I mean, that's, a, that's an honor and a privilege to be able to do, to go yeah. deep with these, these college students because they, they need that foundation. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're desperate for it. Mm-hmm. And many times they are, kind of like the rest of us, we're all in search of that, that we're not sure what we're searching for. Right. And uh, often our searches for that thing that we're missing can take us in dangerous directions. Absolutely. And um, I I love the opportunity to kind of guide that journey, Mm -hmm. uh, ask the questions and give them opportunities to, to, who is God? Right. Who are we? How are we created in his image? What does that just mean? Not, Not in theory. Or, or not just on the academic side. I mean, I love working at a college. We, we bring that academic angle. Right. But on the experiential side, uh, what does this mean of God the Father, of mm-hmm. Jesus? What is Jesus saying to us? And right. How did he sacrifice his life for us? What does that really mean? And how can we have a conversation with our creator? Mm. Um, we're having conversations with ourselves right. so often and the self-talk and, and the conversations we have with many other people in a variety of ways. Right. But what is God saying to us? How can we grasp that mm-hmm. and respond correctly to it? Yeah, I, I love those conversations. Ah. Just a couple of days ago in the class, we went outside. They yeah. were saying, Pastor Chris, it's so nice outside. Let's go outside. And I said, well, let's finish. Let's finish this and we'll go outside. And we just sat and we, we were listening to one another tell their stories. Right. Well, there's power in that. There listening is. to the stories. Mm-hmm. Power in the testimonies, power in the stories. Yeah. But one thing that um, kind of got my attention, they're asking you, who is God? Yes. What is your, you know, for our, even our audience who might be saying, who is God? What is God? What is your answer when, when they come to you and say, well, who is, who is well, God? Well, I usually respond to questions with questions. Right. I, I may do that with you a okay. few times okay. in the conversation. Yeah. But it's like, okay, well, why are you asking me that mm-hmm. question? Why do you want to know? Right. What is your perspective of God? When, when you, I've had students draw and do artwork or write a poem or, or, or find a song that illustrates their understanding of God. Right. And so it helps when we grasp what they are thinking about God, kind of their angle, their view from their lens of life. Um, then as we get to know that better, mm-hmm. I can describe this God has created us in his image. Right. He loves us. He's Absolutely. not a God against us, but for us. He's not just pointing a finger at us saying, do this and do that. He's inviting us to the table right. to spend time with him. Let's sit together and relax. And, and, and I'm inviting them to that God who's created us in his image and he loves what he sees in right. us. Then they can understand the other painful parts of the life narratives Mm -hmm. better when they begin looking through the lens that way. Right. That Father God was actually in the pain with them. Yes. And he is delivering them through the pain. Yes. Yeah. And when we give them opportunities to talk about their pain, Mm -hmm. uh, pain that is often held inside, that, that 
that moves our, our view of God into a dangerous direction. Absolutely. But I give them opportunities to journal about that, pray mm -hmm. through their pain, uh, talk about it, think about it, know that they are accepted by others. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had a student in the class just say out loud things he's never said to anyone in his life. Wow. And how did we respond to that? Mm -hmm. By being there for him. Absolutely, Just no being judgment. Being there, representing the love of God was right. our goal to do that. And wow, that. it's it's just wonderful opportunity. I love that. And there's no judgment yeah. in Christ. There's no yeah. judgment at the mm -hmm. cross. And you know, I think about I think about that. And when you know, the enemy wants us to hide our pain, right? Yeah. Because if we hide our pain, then our pain stays with us and it takes root. Oh. But when you can share your pain and talk about it in a safe environment, that's where freedom takes place. Well, you're, you're right. That that we hold in is that that is holding us back. Right. If we, if we live in denial of whatever that pain is, whatever those difficult journey parts have been, right. um, then we sort of stay there. Absolutely. We're trying to run away from, mm -hmm. but we stay there because we never dealt with it. But talking about it, praying about it, having people around at your life table that you can have healthy dialogue with, right. to me that's like New Testament church. Absolutely. You know, it's like having all things yeah. in common, let's come here together. And, and uh, moving from the singular, to the plural, mm -hmm. not living in isolation, right. having the right people and then kind Absolutely. of talking about it, having people who will listen and love and cry with, laugh mm -hmm. with, be with, mm -hmm. and endure the journey together. That's Absolutely. what we need to do. And I'm seeing that with the college students, but I'm seeing it with people of all ages. Right. I mean, wherever I speak, it's like people feel alone, yeah. uh, people feel isolated, mm -hmm. they feel unloved and unaccepted. And I just want to be the face and the voice to kind of, hey, Amen. I'm going to smile at you <laughs> and let you know you are important. Amen. I want everybody to hear that. It is us. so true. I was at the grocery store a couple weeks ago and I was smiling at an, an older man. He looked at me and he goes, why are you smiling? Mm. And, I, and I just thought to myself, how often people think, why are you smiling? But we have something to smile about. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with more here on The Christian View and Chris Maxwell. Don't go away. And welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today with Chris Maxwell. Thank you so much for being here. You wrote an amazing book, and I'm, hopefully I can say it correctly, um, Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yep. 31 Ways to Stay Balanced on Life's Uneven Surfaces, which is yeah. so powerful because life is so unpredictable. We it never is. know what's going to happen. My husband always says, expect the unexpected, and then you'll always be okay, right? <laughs> Just because you don't know what to expect. Yeah. But um, let's go, let's back up a little bit and talk about the illness, the epilepsy that you, yeah. that you have. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, it's when I was pastoring a church in Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. and my wife, uh, Debbie, and I were just watching our three sons grow up, and I was always healthy. I right. was, you know, young and energetic and doing so many things, writing a lot of curriculum and, and just pastoring. I, I mean, I knew everybody's name, mm -hmm. knew everybody's phone number, had a great memory, and all of that changed uh, drastically and quickly. Okay. I became very sick. They put me in the hospital. Again, this is a long story. I've written books about it. Right. And I have stories in my books. But just to summarize it, um, they did not think I would live. Uh, but if I did live, I would never be able to speak again, write again, do the things that I'm doing, that I was doing. Um, but I had encephalitis okay. and it was destroying my brain. Mm -hmm. And as a result, long-term effect of that, I live with epilepsy and severe scar tissue in the left temporal lobe. Okay. So I've got severe brain damage. Uh, but it's interesting how you, know, you think about Paul's perspective of his weakness and like reading so many of David's poetic psalms, right. like valley shadow death. Often that's life, isn't right. it? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Unfortunately, many of us who are followers of Christ assume we're just going to get everything our way. Right. Uh, but we can live with limps, mm -hmm. mental limps, a variety of limps in our lives. And I live with epilepsy. Some people think, oh, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't admit it. I'm like, why not? You know, this is what I have. Right. This is my condition. Absolutely. But but God has me and his strength is made perfect mm -hmm. in my weakness. Amen. Amen. So I had to learn how to learn again, learn how to communicate again, learn how to read again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was writing and speaking, and, but even in that, I depended more on God right. through that weakness than I ever had. I could talk about depending on God, but I had no choice then but to depend, but depend on, on God, God. Yes. and other people helping right. me through the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a summary of uh, yeah. It's a that. summary, you know, it's God's, God's goodness and God's grace. You know, yeah. what Satan meant for evil, God turned it around and is using it for 
yeah. for better. You're right. One of the books that I wrote about that is Underwater. Yes. Um, because we just felt so underwater, will I ever come ashore? And, and now I speak around the country and around the world telling my story because so many people feel alone. Right, they feel underwater. Mm -hmm. And we want to give them hope to come ashore and know it is often okay to not be okay right. in that way, but to find hope and peace in the God who created us and he created these brains. And even in the weakness and the scar tissue can still be transformed by the renewing yes, of the mind. Absolutely. And you know, I think about that, you know, isolation is a tool of the enemy. It is. He wants us to feel like, again, that no one can understand. No one's gone through what we've gone through. Mm -hmm. If they knew it, I've done, they wouldn't love me or accept me. Yeah. And that isolates us, and, and that's a lie from the enemy. It is, it is. And uh, that's one of the key points we're trying to make in equilibrium mm -hmm. um, because of what I've learned, not just from pastoring and, and many years of caring for other people, but my own struggles, my right. own weaknesses, my own scars. Mm -hmm. Um, how do we find balance in life? Because right. everything seems so out of balance. Absolutely. You know, especially these last few years, yes. everything is leaning so many different directions. There's division, there's disappointment, there's disease, there's disability. In the middle of all of the uncertainty and the leaning in different directions, we need balance. Right. Well, balance is not such an attention-getting word, but <laughs> so equilibrium is the title of right, the book. Right. You kind of grab attention. I think about uh, just kind of uh, getting on a plane and, and you know just going through security, and, and you know they've got my ticket. I'm getting ready to get on the plane, and the, the sign said, "Caution: uneven surfaces." Right. So I wrote a poem about it, but then it ended up turning into a book. Okay. Uh, because life is like that. It is. It's uneven surfaces. And so the book Equilibrium, 31 ways to stay balanced on life's uneven surfaces. Right. So it's just kind of suggestions, guidelines. It's at my age, I want to pass this on to the younger generation, mm -hmm. those who are my age, and all of us to find balance amid the chaos. Right. And so these suggestions, I believe, have helped keep me sane in the middle of the uncertainty. Well, I love them. I mean, just I'm going to just open it straight up because in the book you have you have the chapters, and they're not long chapters. No. And then at the back you have prayers, reflections, and right. things like that. But um, let's peek out. Let's peek out the window and imagine great things coming our way. Oh, yeah. Expecting God to do miraculous things in our life. And that's the, that's the first chapter. And we wanted to start with what seems to be impossible. Right. First chapter, believe in the big. Yeah. Now, so what if we did that? Instead of just choosing the safe world of doubt and nothing's ever going to happen right. that's good or successful. Let's believe in the big. Absolutely. And so I include biblical perspective on that, but personal stories and stories of other people that others assumed would never be able to do anything big, right. but they did big things. They did great things. And God is calling us to be people who just choose to believe in the big. Right. If we have a little bit of faith, just, just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. bit is all we need. Yeah, a mustard geez, seed I, of faith I, is all we as need. I, as I was writing that book, I want people to read it and read respond right. by choosing, not feeling mm -hmm. faith, but choosing to believe today in the big. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the important part. We have to choose. You know, yeah. it's okay to have feelings, but when mm -hmm. we let those feelings have us, that's when we get stuck and paralyzed. That's when the fear oh, yeah. comes in. But if we can choose to believe and walk out, step out in faith and mm -hmm. believe the big, because God says that he will do exceedingly, abundantly, far more than we could ever imagine or hope for. Yeah. But if we're sitting on the sideline, afraid to go in, right. then can he really... Mm. Do all he wants to do through us yeah. and for us. And what if today we just choose to imagine? Yeah. You know, those things that we could believe and can hope for. God can do this? Right. Yes, he can. How can he do this? Through you. You're the one that God wants to do those right. things through. So that's how we start the book. I love believe it. In believe in the big. Believe in the big. But equilibrium, how do we balance that mm -hmm. out? Chapter two, be faithful in the little. Right. If we want the big dreams to come true, those things that seem impossible, we need to do the everyday, mm -hmm. the unnoticed, right. that when no one is looking, be faithful in the little, the tiny, the silent, right. not the famous, not that that will get applause or right. attention, mm -hmm. but just the gentle, the quiet, the calm, the peaceful. That brings equilibrium. Yeah, let's believe that we can march into a city and it will be God's place. Right. How do we respond to that believing in the big? Faithful in the tiny. Right. So I told stories about people mm -hmm. who have done that, pastors and missionaries who chose, yeah, I'm going to believe in big things, but it's going to start right here, right, right now with the tiny and the little. Right, with maybe your prayer closet, yeah. getting in your prayer closet, spending time with the, the Lord. But I do think that that's a lie from the enemy or a trick from the enemy. You have to go big or you go home. You yeah. can start the small and watch it just grow as you're obedient yes. and surrendered to the Lord. And knowing that really what 
from our culture appears to be small, from the kingdom perspective, yes. it is very big Absolutely. and very important. Absolutely, and I think we miss that sometimes. That's such a great reminder that we need to start small because God does have amazing things yes, for us does. in the small. We'll be right back with a little bit more with The Christian View. Don't go away. Hi, and welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today with Chris Maxwell. Thank you so much. It's been so fun so far. Yeah, We're talking about your book, um, Equilibrium, 31 Ways to Stay Balanced on Life's Uneven Surfaces. Um, each chapter kind of builds upon the other chapter with yeah. so much insight, so many stories. But I want to jump ahead to chapter 12, Don't mm. Endure a Life Alone. Oh, Let's talk a little yeah. bit about that. I'm glad we're going to talk about that chapter yeah. because I, I see it as so important mm -hmm. because many people do feel alone. Right. I mean, the, all these biblical narratives and these stories, the passages, are in the plural. Mm -hmm. It's not just singular, not just a me thing or right. an I thing. It is an us and a we thing. I spend so much of my time uh, counseling ministers, pastors, missionaries who have felt alone. They've been hurt by people right. and they respond to those hurts by choosing to not really be in relationship yes. with people. So in the book Equilibrium, we want them to balance that out mm -hmm. by choosing to not endure life alone. Right. There will be storms, there will be difficult seasons in life, but we together can be victorious. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, the book of Acts is like the spirit of the Lord coming upon the people people right. together. And then they had like all things in common. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, breaking of bread, fellowship and prayer, all things in common. They were experiencing life together. Yes. We often are in the singular alone mm -hmm. looking for a way to get, but God is calling us to live life together. Right. So we tell stories in equilibrium and I hope people get a copy of this and think practically, who are the people that need to be in my life right. now? So that's the chapter, Don't Endure Life Alone. And then we balance it out. Mm -hmm. The equilibrium is in the chapter after that. Which is doing life with other people. Well, after Don't Endure Life Alone, choose to spend time alone mm -hmm. with God. Right. We are better if we, in both of those, right. in both of those angles, mm -hmm. to balance it out. I'm better with other people if I choose to spend time alone with right. God. But my alone time with God is not to be the end of the story. I'm to merge and mingle that mm -hmm. together with others. Right. So that's the equilibrium. The prayer time prepares me to be with other people right. so that I can pray with other people. Mm -hmm. So I have stories, uh, stories in there that will make people cry a little bit. Do you have a okay. favorite? Well, uh, the, some stories in there have been people's favorites that surprised me because I talk about um, deciding to leave a restaurant that I eat at just every Thursday night, and instead of going home, I went to visit my dad, who had, was, was 90 years old, mm -hmm. I went to visit him, didn't really want to, but I just, instead of going home, went to visit with him, not knowing that would be my last time with right. him. Right. But I needed that time with him. Absolutely. Uh, I tell stories about uh, confession, and sometimes you don't feel like confessing something that's painful in your life. But God directed me not to be controlled by emotions, controlled by feelings. Right. That's one of the chapters. Yes, and yes, then we yes, follow yes. that by uh, listing a variety of feelings. When to cry. We need to cry more. I mean, like everybody, please cry. <laughs> I don't, I'm not saying that something bad happened to you to uh, force you to cry, but, but these bodies are created right. and crafted and designed. That's a part of our and it's medicine. Not a weakness. And our healing. No. It's not a weakness to yeah. cry. Not even real, for men. It's, it's yeah. not a weakness. Yeah, I spoke in one men's convention, real men cry. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and that was the topic. So let's cry together, laugh yeah. together, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes alone, but right. then with other people. But one of the favorite characters, one of the favorite people that I tell a story about is someone named Kiki. Okay. And Kiki is not a person. Kiki is a cow. Nice. So you okay. have to read the story about Kiki okay. because I sneak in the story about Kiki, but I'm talking about Kiki the cow and she's not as demanding and controlling as so many other cows. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from Kiki. I learned what <laughs> I to be careful about, uh, right. but I want to be more like Kiki, mm -hmm. but I was actually using Kiki's story as a sneaky way to tell the story about Bill. Bill Parton was one of my best friends in high school. Okay. He was the big man on the basketball team. Right. I was the short, short point guard. But I learned a lot about equilibrium right. from Bill Parton mm -hmm. through all the difficulties he's faced in life and how he just cares for everybody, mm -hmm. which brings me to one of the chapters I want us to end with. Right. Love everybody everywhere. Absolutely. Don't just pick and choose people right. who agree with you right. on everything. There's too much division these days. There is. Let us love, not just a few, but let's love everybody mm -hmm. everywhere. Everywhere. And forgive 
everyone, huge. of everything. Right. Those are some of the chapters mm -hmm. in equilibrium. Love everybody everywhere, forgive everyone of everything. And that helps us choose to not live life or endure life alone. alone. That's the balance we and need. And not being offended. If, yes. we, if we love people and let go and, and, and forgive, then we won't walk around forgive, uh, offended or harboring yeah. these, this bitterness or these walls, which will keep us isolated and alone. Yeah, and we, and we include that in the book. Mm -hmm. In one of the chapters, care. Right. Care for others, let's love people, care, but don't carry. Let's talk about that a little bit, because that's, yeah. you know, that's hard for some people to do. Oh, and to so many separate the two. struggle that. Right. Uh, but we are to cast our cares upon right. him. Right. And, and I'm weak in this, mm -hmm. I admit it. I do not do this well. Right. So I was writing about it honestly. I care too much, and I carry too much. Absolutely. But if we really trust God, mm -hmm. and not just in theory or a theological statement, if we trust God, I can care for these people that I love and that I'm called to minister to and to serve, but realize that he cares more than I do. Absolutely. And I need to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. I need to sleep well and trust him to care for those that I care for. Right. Because I should not carry them. You shouldn't carry the it, burden. It, it, yeah. brings, it, it, it brings some dangerous health itch, issues mm -hmm. in our lives right. and relational issues if we carry too much of the luggage. Amen. You know, I was listening to Joyce Myers a while back, and she said her husband used to always say, just cast your cares, cast your cares. And she would get frustrated because she goes, I don't know how to cast my cares. And he was always casting his cares. And she said one day it just, it just kind of clicked. Yeah. She learned to cast her cares. And she goes, I can love, but I don't have to carry it all. Yes. Because you're right, when we carry all that that burden, it does, you know, it, it messes with our bodies, heart disease, yes. high blood pressure, you know, you name it, it arthritis, it, it mm -hmm. affects our bodies. And so we have to learn to cast it yeah. and give it to Jesus, lay it at his feet so that he can carry it oh, and we can continue right. to love. And writing has helped me do that, right. to release my feelings and my worries in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So Equilibrium, it's, it's, uh, the book is on Amazon. It's my 11th book, right. which is a miracle because we didn't know if I'd ever be able to write mm -hmm. again. So 11th book, uh, it's on my website, chrismaxwell.me. It's on Amazon. People can find it in a variety of ways. I love it. Amen. Thank you so much Thank for you. being with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure. We'll be right back with a little bit more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. We've had a great discussion today with Chris Maxwell. Thank you so much for being here Thank today. You. Make sure you check out his book, Equilibrium. It is an amazing book, 31 chapters, very inspirational and encouraging. So make sure you check that out. Remember that God loves you, He sees you, and He has great plans for you. Stay connected to His Word. Stay connected to a Bible church. And we'll see you next time here on The Christian View. Take care. Bye-bye.